Hi, I'm going to show you how to do some machine learning in Power BI. We're going to use uh, Scikit-Learn to do a churn model in Power BI. So uh, this is a data set that I'm looking at. We want to see employee churn. And there are a couple different things that influence churn, such as satisfaction, average time, work accident. And we all have this data here. And then we also have a column where it tells us whether the person left or, or stayed, which is our churn column, which is what we want to predict using our machine learning algorithm. So I've piped this information into Power BI. And you can see here, we have the same data and then we have our left column. So what we're going to do is use some Python scripting, which uh, can now be entered into your edit queries using the run Python script option. So what I'm going to do is take you through each step of the code and then we're going to input this code into this script. Usually you don't want to write your script in here because you don't have the ability to debug it like you would in a IDE, which is um, like Spider or Jupyter Notebooks. So I'm going to go over to my IDE, which is Spider, and have my code there. Now, first thing we're going to do is load in all the packages that we're going to use to change the data, pre-process the data, clean the data, and use our machine learning packages such as Scikit-Learn. So you can see that I'm importing Pandas, which is a data manipulation uh, library, NumPy, which is a math library, then Scikit-Learn, which allows us to split our data into training and test sets so our algorithm can learn. Then we have logistic regression, which allows us to predict, which is a classification, predict whether someone has left or stayed in the company. And then we have our kind of pre-processing libraries, which is to encode the labels that are strings and then to scale our data. Okay, so I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna load that first part and then also I'm going to load the data set where you can see that I'm using pandas to read in the CSV. So I'm going to run that, that step, those, well, that, those cells. And you're going to see that I've loaded in my data set. So here I have all my data here and we can see I have our column that I want to predict. And then we have everything's mostly in a numerical fashion, except we have two columns that are department and salary that we want to encode, which turn into zeros and ones or a number. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to change those two columns or those two features to numerics. And what we're going to use, we're going to use label encoder. I'm going to save that in a variable called LE, and then I'm going to select the department column, and then I'm going to fit and transform that column so it's turned into a number. And I'm going to do the same thing with salary. I'm selecting salary. I'm using the fit and transform function out of that and changing it over. So let's see what happens when we run this. So now that I've run that, you can see that I still have all my columns, but when we get over to departments, it's been changed into a number. So machine learning algorithms can only use numbers, so we can't have any strings or categories. We need to have numbers. So now that we've done the first step in pre-processing, the next step is, as in any kind of classification, you need the features that you're using to predict what you're trying to classify as a yes or a no or left or stay or zero or one. So Y is our target variable and that's our left column, which is all zeros and ones. And then what I did is I chose all the features 
that I th- that influenced whether we left. And all I did was take all the columns names and save them in a variable called features. Now you don't have to do that. You can write them all out and put them in a list, but this just makes your code look a lot cleaner. And then I use X and I brought in the features. So let's run that and we'll have those variables. So now that I've run that, you can see I have my X variable, which is all of those columns except our left column, which indicates whether the person stayed or left. And then I have the Y column, which is zeros and ones. And then I still, we saved all our features, which are there. So all of those are our variables and that's in our variable explorer. Now, because we have our X and we have numbers that are decimals that are less than one, and then we have things that are in the hundreds, this data needs to give us a good prediction. So we need to put it on the same scale. So now I'm going to use a new package called standard scalar, and I'm saving that as S. So I'm going to scale our X variables or our X table or our X data frame. Um, and I'm going to use S, I'm going to call the standard scalar, and then I'm going to fit and transform our X data frame with fit and transform. So let me run that and show you what it looks like. So now that we've run that, you can see now our data is all on the same scale. And this is saved in our section here. Now this is what we've done to pre-process our data so we can uh, use it in a machine learning algorithm. So now I want to split it into training and test sets where I have some that the model is going to train on or learn and then a set that we're going to test on. I, okay so you can see I have our say uh, train test split and I'm going to split X and Y and I'm going to say four variables, X train, X test, Y train and Y test. And then I'm going to use train test split from the Psychic Learn library to split that up. The default is a 70-30 split. You can change that to whatever you need. So let's run that. Now I should have four more variables. So you can see those variables populated there. And I have my X test and Y test and Y train and X train. Now I can put this data into my model to learn. I'm going to let it learn on X train and Y train using our logistic regression algorithm. I'm going to fit it, which is the learning part of the algorithm. And then I'm going to call two predictions which is I'm going to predict whether they stay or left. And then I'm going to, I want the prediction probability. So let's run that. Okay, now we've trained our model. Now that we've trained our model, we can now get our predictions. Y pred and Y probability, which I think I already highlighted there and run. So now we can just go and look at it. So I predicted all our X values and I got the probability for all of it. So you can see here, if I go to Y pred, I have all of the predictions, whether they predicted or state linked to the index. And then I have the probabilities here. And then I can load that back to our data frame, save it as two new columns. So I'm going to run that. And you can see if I go back to the data set, I have those two columns there. Now, all you have to do is copy and paste this code with one exception. So let's go back to the edit queries. So if you go back to edit queries, can you see this ha hashtag, which is a notation data set holds the input data. Our data set is already loaded. So for us to, to copy and paste that, we only have to make one exception. We don't need to load the, the data set. So when we copy and paste this, we can copy and paste it all. 
go back over to our Python run script. Now we don't need to keep this. We can just copy over. Now remember, you we already have our data set loaded, so we're just gonna get rid of that one step. Now I'm gonna run it. I ran the script, and then what we get is we get a name of our new data set and a value which is our new table. So if I double click that table, it's going to expand. And now we've run the script and we have our prediction and probabilities. So this is how you can run a Python script for churn analysis. And now I'm just gonna load, load that data into a new table and maybe do a visualization which I've already done. So I click and load and apply. And then I can look at our model's performance. So here's the actual model where we had 23.8% of the people who actually churned, who actually left the company, which is represented by our one. And 76% people stayed. And then our prediction algorithm only predicted half of those people who actually left would leave. So we can definitely tune our model better by doing a little bit more pre-processing or using a different algorithm like a, a gradient boost algorithm, a cat boost algorithm instead of just purely logistic regression. But just with this model only, imagine if you could have prevented half the people from your company leaving just by running that prediction algorithm. I hope this helps. Thank you.